welcome back. This is video number three of my Painting Butterfly series. And today we're gonna make a splatter butterfly. It's really easy and a lot of fun. So the materials you need are just a simple sheet of paper. I like to use mixed media paper for this. Uh, it's about nine by 12, but you can use simple cardstock as well. Uh, you're gonna need a selection of brushes. Um, you can get these packs of brushes at the local craft shop. I think they're like five or six dollars. Um, and then you'll need some water in a cup of some kind. Um, and you'll need uh, some kind of a palette. Um, I actually sometimes like to use these little um, uh, med cups. Uh, the nice thing is you can cover them with uh, tin foil and save the paint for the next time. Uh, or I often use pa just a paper plate uh, for uh, my palette. And then you're gonna need a number 10 pencil um, and an eraser. I love kneaded erasers, but a regular eraser will work just fine. Um, and we're gonna use three different brushes today. We're gonna use this large fat flat brush, which we used on the last video. Um, and it's about, I think, an inch or maybe a little more, uh, a flat brush. And then there's this one that's about three-fourths of an inch. Um, and then you need some kind of a small brush. A small round brush is the best. Um, so that's what we're going to use uh, today. You'll also want some paper towels um, and a, a selection of acrylic paints. Now I'm going to use the same colors I used on the last project. Um, and these are uh, craft paints you can get at the local craft place. I think they're about 79 cents each. Um, and I have some nice spring colors. Um, but I'm going to add a couple of colors. I'm going to add red this time. And I'm also going to use black and white. Uh, but you can use any colors you like. You can use different ones. But I would make them bright because butterflies are bright colors. So um, to get started... Um, you don't really have to sketch this out, but uh, I like to do just a quick little sketch to give me a sense of where the butter butterfly is going to sit on the paper. Um, so I'm just going to very loosely do um, kind of a small, elegant butterfly body. I'm just going to do a couple of very, very loose uh, lines to give me a sense of where the butterfly is going to be. Um, I'm going to do a small, narrow, very kind of elegant butterfly. And just a couple of free lines here, just to uh, kind of map out uh, where my butterfly is going to sit on the paper. So, but I may not even follow those exactly. You can see it's just very loose. So I have kind of top wings and bottom wings, but they're just sort of fanned out here. And then we're going to take our big flat brush and we're gonna paint a nice wash uh, to create a backdrop. I'm gonna use the same colors of craft paint I used for uh, the last uh, butterfly, the um, stained glass butterfly. Uh, but I think I'm gonna add, I'm gonna change this blue, I think. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. I need some blue and I need some yellow. But I think I'm gonna change the color of this blue to be a little more purple, so just for interest, so, because I like purple. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it. I hope I didn't put too much. I don't want it to be dark. Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. That's a very pretty purple. So I'm gonna mix that up, but similarly to the last butterfly we made, um, we want this to be a wash background, just to give a wash of nice color. So I'm going to water that down. I'm going to add a lot of water to it. It's going to curl up our paper again. Actually, I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use, for this one, um, I think it's the same brush I used last time. It's, uh, I don't know, about a one-inch brush. And get some water in it. Um, and just do a nice wash a purple. This is going to look, the last butterfly we did looked more like a bright sunny day. This is going to look more like dusk, I think. Um, and again, kind of go around 
uh, the butterfly wings, but it doesn't have to be exact, but you do want to keep a horizontal uh, motion. I'm going to add a little more color if you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Actually, the gradation of color is sort of interesting. Um, and now I'm going to add in some uh, yellow. So I've got to wash my brush off. Uh, but I'm going to keep it watery again. And I'm going to put in a wash of yellow on the bottom. Um, and I want to have kind of a sense of, kind of a sunset. So I'm going to blend the yellow in a little bit as I go up. Maybe add a little more purple in here. Just to sort of blend it. And then we're going to let that dry. And again, um, it's the paper's curling up now, but it'll start to uh, flatten out as it dries. So we're just going to let that dry. So our background has dried pretty well and the paper is flattened out quite nicely. Uh, we can flatten this out more with uh, putting some books on top of it uh, after the whole thing is done. But I think we can work with this. So I'm going to add some colors to my palette. I think I'm going to add some orange and I'm going to use that same yellow that I used for the background. And I'm going to use my, uh, I think this is about a one inch flat brush. You can use one a little bit smaller, but the idea for this project is to be very free. Um, and this is kind of a dry brush technique. So you do want your brush to be kind of dry. You don't want to add a lot of water to it. So um, I'm going to get just a little bit of uh, orange in here. And then kind of following the line of my wings, I can still see my pencil lines here. I'm just going to start to push, put down some pops of color. And I want it to brush out um, with that kind of dry brush technique like that. So I want it to be bright and not perfect. I'm going to add a little yellow. I'm going to go right on top with the same um, brush. There's still some orange on there, so it's going to start to blend a little bit. Actually, I think I want it to be more pure yellow, so I'm going to wash that off a little bit. But got to dry off your brush and then add some more yellow. I want my yellow to be nice and bright. Um, and kind of, again, following the line of your wings, but just let them kind of feather out at the end. Uh, they're just going to do that naturally. And we're going to lay color on top of each other here. So I'm going to go on the other side and add some yellow over here. This is a very free looking butterfly. I'm going to add some yellow in here too. Uh, and I need some orange on this wing. I'm going to add some orange. And I'm not quite going into the body. I can still see my body over here. A little more paint. And then I think I'm going to add some red. I like all this heat going on. I'm going to have to temper that with some cool. I think I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush for my red. Get a little red on there. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'll add a little more red down here. And again, I'm following my wings, but um, not precisely. This particular project is not about precision. It's about freedom. This butterfly is going to have a lot of motion to it. It already does, you can see. 
So now I think I'm gonna add some cool colors. I've got some blue over here. I'm gonna keep with that sand brush, so I gotta really wash it out good. Then I add some pops of blue. Because I think it just needs a little contrast. It's very feathery looking. Okay, uh, you know, I think we're gonna let this dry and then when that dries, we're gonna add a little bit more to it. I think my uh, butterfly here is pretty dry. I wanna add a little bit of depth and I put some black acrylic into one of these med cups. I like these med cups because you can save the paint by uh, putting some tin foil over the top. Uh, and I'm gonna use my flat brush um, and again, we're going to use that same dry brush technique. Uh, unless there's more with the black, you can always add more if you want. So I kind of dabbed some off. And I'm just going to add a little bit to the center, coming off the center of my butterfly, uh, just to add some depth and not too much. I'm going to add a little more on the other side. You can always go back and add more if you want. That just gives some depth to my butterfly. And then I need to add a body. Now this is going to be kind of a long, elegant body. I'm going to use my small brush. So I'm just going to add my head. And kind of a long, elegant body. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And add a couple little antennas. And now here's the fun part. We're going to add a bunch of splatters to this. To add splatters, you need to get your paint fairly watery. So I'm going to add some water to my to my cup. Actually, I think I'm going to do this on my palette. It's a little easier to see. So I'm going to put the black on my palette and add some water to it. Uh, and you got to get it fairly watery. Um, and see how this works. Oh, maybe too much water there. can't entirely control this. There we go. Don't be afraid of this. You can try it out on a piece of paper if you want, but you can't really control what you're going to get. So, you know, you might get some splashes, you're going to get some big dots, some little dots, but it really adds a lot of freedom and movement and some of the dots are going to be close together and others are not that's what i like you know i think i'm going to add um some other colors to this too i think maybe some blue dots i'm going to go back to my blue paint and add some water to that. And then I think I'm gonna add a little white too. By the way, make sure you're not using a tablecloth or a covering that you <laughs> feel strongly about because you might get some paint on it. I just did that, I think. Oh, I like the white. The white adds some nice contrast.
All right, just a few more black splatters here. And I think we are good. There we have our splatter butterfly. I hope you guys had fun. Join us next time and we'll have a new project for you. See you soon.